welcome back to the coding circus today we are going to have some fun playing with gravity inside of Vizard and taking a look at the different kinds of effects we can have on our objects the last time we were here we added in physics and allowed our basketball and our beach ball to collide and created some kind of events for when those collisions happen but there's other kinds of things that happen in the real world uh, namely gravity so let's dive right in to our code and see what we can see so we have a blank wizard file we're going to put in a lot of the same things we had in before we're going to put in all of our imports let's add all those in we're going to add in our enabling of our physics we're going to add that in um, we're going to add in our three methods. We're not changing those from last time. So here's our three functions, I should say. Those are added on grab, on release, on collision. That's all going to be the same. We're going to add in our callbacks and our um, vizconfig and our environment. Add all that in, add in our messages. This is all going to be pretty much the same. Now, we're going to do something different here to our basketball and our beach ball. So when I added them in, uh, I added my basketball, just like I normally do adding the child. But this time, instead of adding a collide mesh, I'm adding a collide box. You have to add a collide box in order to get gravity to actually affect it. So in order to get our basketball to drop, we have to add a, a collide box to it versus the collide mesh. That's just how they decided to design it. So we could actually theoretically have things, some things in our world that are affected by gravity and other things that are not affected by gravity. I'm going to do the same thing with my beach ball and have a collide box on that as well. So beachball.collidebox, that is the new thing that we've added. We really haven't added anything else new. Add everything else to my grabbable objects. Um, so I can grab my beach ball and let's just go ahead and give this a try. Did you notice the balls? They dropped past. Um, actually, you could probably still see them. They're way, 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 way down there. Um, apparently, the beach ball has hit the basketball at some point, and they kind of run into each other. Um, that's not real helpful. We kind of want the beach ball and the basketball to stop at some point so we can see them. In order to make that happen, we have to go into our inspector and look at our world. If we look at our collide world, you'll see that in my world, I have these four walls. There's a ceiling right there. And if I zoom in and click down here, you can see there's a floor. But I've done something special. I've named the floor. So that way I can reference it in code, just like we've done before where we've added an object into our world um, in code by naming it. This time what we're going to do is instead of just adding the child as just a thing and then placing it, we're going to do something special with it. I'm going to call it instead of just calling it thing, we're going to call it the ground. And I'm going to set it up as what's called a, a, excuse me, a collide plane. So I'm going to add that right after I add my environment. I'm going to go up here, line 30 here, add this in. So I'm going to set the ground and I'm going to add the floor. I'm getting the child from my world and adding the floor. So instead of adding the object um, like the basketball where we do viz.addChild, we're doing the environment.getChild because it already exists in our environment. 
and now we're going to tell it to make this a collide plane. Now a collide plane has no height to it, but it does extend on forever in every direction. So I've only added this and watch the effect it has on my program now. I'm gonna run it and here comes my back. There they stopped. They hit the floor, okay? So they hit the floor. And let's go through and make sure my grabber tools still work. See, beach ball, drop beach ball, beach ball, drop beach ball. Beach ball hits basketball, but notice what happens now. That basketball, because it's a um, collide box, not a collide mesh, I can't put the beach ball inside the basketball. I kind of push it and I get this physics effect where I can now push the basketball around the room. And in fact, I can fly up in the air and drop my beach ball. Now, if I fly too far up, there's remember, there's a roof on this. I found this out by accident. My roof doesn't have any color to it. I do have a roof. But it doesn't have any color to it, so I can't actually see it because I want it to be able to see through it. But when I go way up here, watch, I'm able to drag it out of the roof. But watch what happens now. I can drop it. Oh, it stayed in. Oh, okay, that's great. So the beach ball dropped, actually dropped down and hit the basketball. So that was kind of fun. So let me fly back down. So now I have this room here with the beach ball and the basketball, but notice my beach ball it kind of sort of went through the wall here a little bit because there's no plane there. If I wanted to create other planes for the beach ball to bounce against rather than just the floor, I'd have to go into my object and I'd have to add in other collide planes to prevent my beach ball from going through the wall, which is not very helpful for playing a game. We don't want it to go through the wall. So we could add in more collide planes. Maybe there's a left collide plane, a right collide plane, a bottom, a top, all those different collide planes. Now, the other thing we can do in our program still, which we probably want to change. Let me go back to my program here. Is as I fly around, uh, I can fly through walls, which is fine. I get a little lost when I do that. You know, it's fine if that's what you want to happen, to have it fly through walls. But I don't know if I want to fly through walls all the time in every kind of game. Sometimes I want to prevent my sprite through going through objects and going through walls. I don't want to do that. Um, in fact, I think I could fly through the basketball and beach ball at this point, maybe. Uh, but because they have the mesh on them, I may, or the bo collide box on them, I probably can't. So I'm going to add in another command here. And this is going to add in collision detection for the main view. So this is the view that we have, our heads up view. When we fly through our world now, and add this in, oops, you can see my basketball drop in the background. When I fly, I can't go through the wall. The hand goes through the wall, fine, but I, I can't physically go through the wall here. That stops. Now, I wonder if the beach ball can still go through the wall. I don't think it can. Let's find out. Let's go over here. Bring my hand back. Notice I can't hit the floor either. Oops, it kind of messes it up when I do that. Let me try to start that again. There we go. Maybe make this full screen so I can actually move things. There we go. I'm going to grab that beach ball. I'm going to carry it over. I'm going to see if I can push the beach ball through the wall. And I think I probably can. Yeah, see, look, I can put the beach ball through the wall. Now, if I let go of the beach ball, it's going to still bounce on the floor because that plane, even though it's outside the room, let me just see if I can fly up and show you. Oh, I got lost. There we go. Oh, I lost my hand. There we go. 
Nope, I have to restart it. Sometimes I lose the hand. I don't know why it does that. Must be a glitch. Okay. So let's try this again. Grab my beach ball. Push it through the wall. Drop it. Back up a little bit. Hopefully, I think I may have lost my hand again. Something about going through that wall makes me lose my hand. Yeah, so I'll just go through the door here. Oh, now it's back. All right, well, maybe I can't show you, because it seems like it glitches when I put... Oh, wait, nope, there we go. So you can see the beach ball is now outside the wall. Actually, it's still attached to the wall, isn't it? I don't know if this is glitching or if this is actually the physics. It looks like I'm kind of really messed up now. It looked like a totally glitch. But it looks like the ball is actually kind of partially still in the wall, so it's kind of hanging on the wall. So that's kind of fun. But, so we still got some work to do on our physics. Um, so if you want to add in the ability for some objects to fly and some objects not, that's the difference between the collide box and the collide mesh. Let's put a collide mesh on our beach ball and see what happens. Run it. And what we should see happen is just the basketball comes down. The beach ball never comes down because the beach ball has a collide mesh on it. So it has no um, physics gravity associated with it in the world. So we have to use that collide box. And then there's also something called a collide sphere. And you can see that works as well. So we could put collide spheres on these since they're spheres. And you might choose a sphere over a box if it's actually a sphere. So you might want to get that shape to match a little bit closer to what the object actually is. And there we go. Feel free to add in a loop and maybe add in a whole bunch of balls dropping from the ceiling. Uh, that could be a whole lot of fun. Uh, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time.